Alrighty, what's going on everybody? This is my first attempt in a new series for the Game Architects. As you can see, this is a little more low production value, a little less editing. However, I'm gonna go through a couple of things in the Woodfall Temple and explain how and why most things work and uh, how to how to actually fix them. First of all, I'm using cheat codes. Actually, mine are fairly outdated right now. They're cheat codes with save states or something that is fairly similar to save states. Those allow you to warp around, use your position, load your position, pretty much load everything that you need. Uh, those are based on the save file or the rest of the save file that is actually on your save file or the space that is uh, used on your save file. So this is uh, actually really convenient if you want to pick up the... If you really want to pick that up or want to have some footage on that, then um, just tell me in the comments and I might be able to make a video about that. Anyways, let's get us started. Today I will show you a little bit about the Woodfall Temple, which is uh, in most runs the first temple that you will complete in runs unless you're doing the hookshot route. Um, the hookshot route is a little bit outdated. If you want to really start running, then I would advise you to actually start with the hookshot route. But overall, I'm just going to cover pretty much everything. I'm going to cover hookshot strats, hookshot less strats. Um, let's start. First of all, if you're doing the beginner route, um, then you will most certainly have the hookshot equipped here. You jump down here, roll over here, and you just use the hookshot to get up here fairly easily. So, that far, so obvious. Oops. In a certain amount of categories, you won't have the hookshot. Or if you're running more updated routes, if you want to learn the hookshotless route, for example. Or if you want to switch to the English version, which also skips the hookshot. So what can you do? Um, first of all, you can jump down here and try to have like a 40 degree angle. I'm not saying 45. 45 might work as well, but I'm usually trying to maintain a 40 degree angle towards this thing. Target before any of those blue fluff balls. I don't actually know their name. And just backflip on here. If you end up, uh, and this happens sometimes, getting a wrong angle, like I'm just gonna use the 45 degree angle right now, which should work as well, as you can see, it just it just works. Um, you can still correct your angle because unlike an Ocarina of Time, you can actually influence your backflips and side hops and all the things you do. All right, on to the next room. And here is our first room where we're gonna perform a trick if we're doing the hookshot last round. If we're doing the hookshot round, just Hookshot that thing here. Make sure the red dot is visible because otherwise the flames or the moths will just knock you down and you're gonna get a lot of damage, which isn't really what you want to do. So we're not gonna use that. And instead, we're gonna use bombs because bombs are nice. Make sure to slash towards the ledge. Um, the top slope of the clock uh, is at the torch because that indi indicates where you're gonna go with your hovers. I'm going to assume that you already know um, the infinite sword glitch and the mega flip. If you don't, you should definitely check out another video. Um, I will try to explain them as quick as possible. So how does the infinite sword glitch work? You interrupt your crouch step, which looks like this. Uh, the first frame link's shield is in front of his face again. So. It basically looks like this again, and that is the frame you want to pick up the bomb. So, you get used to it. It's not a hard trick, it just requires a little bit of practice. Uh, a mega flip is... <laughs> you want to draw a bomb, drop it on somewhere between the 6th and the 7th red flash, because those two frames are the frames you will need to drop the bomb and roll at so they hit your invincibility frames, which will then in turn give you an extreme amount of negative speed, if you manage to release your backflip on the first frame in order to not get into any speed cap. The longer you're in a speed cap, by for example holding forward or holding back, the slower your mega flip will be. So usually people pause well for that. It basically looks like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, roll. First bomb frame, second bomb frame. And you can see the first frame, Link's shield is basically, use the first frame, Link puts back his shield, like back on his back. That is the frame you want to do a backflip on. So input a backflip, first frame a backflip, third frame a bomb of the bomb explosion, and just release everything. And jump up here, do a jump slash. In case you fail, what happens if you fail? Well, if you're running hookshot once, then you're pretty much out of luck. Uh, you'll have to go back up and do this entire thing again. If you're running the hookshot route, you can just go 
like close to one of the vases here. And uh, you will see that you can slightly reach the torch here. It is a little precise. Uh, it's fairly like two pixels, two, three pixels in order to get it. There you go. Just do a jump slash up here if you're on the Japanese version because you will need that store jump slash for the upcoming Liz Alphas fight in order to get your bow. Uh, if you do ended up not getting a jump slash, you can always just jump over here and do that. Um, all right, but let's get a little bit into backups. So what will you do if you actually fell down and you realize you're, you don't really have any, like, well, actually, if you don't have the bow yet, you're pretty much out of luck. You really just got to go back over there and uh, do the mega flip. There is always bombs in this part right here. So if I were to, if I destroy this one, there's always bombs in that one. So just in case, you can always make it over here. All right, on to the Lizalfos fight. Now, this one is... Uh, it's a little tricky. It's fairly easy. Um, if you're on the Japanese version, okay, um, you have two variants of defeating him. One of them is jump slashing with a decky stick, which will then in turn only require you to crouch stab once, or you do a jump slash, which means you'll have to crouch stab twice. Um, the hookshotless round will not obtain any decky sticks or decky nuts, so those are pretty much out of the option here. Um, because otherwise you will require, like, basically your run is over if you collect either of those. So you definitely don't want that. Um, due to an upcoming trick later, but we will explain that stuff in a different video. So, you're heading into here, you're trying to go through the center of the door pretty much. Uh, whether the, how the Los Elfos moves is RNG, but a strategy you can use is target and then move forward. And the Los Elfos will face you hat on. Uh, as you saw there, it was just a little slow on the crouch stab, but you get the gist of it. And there he is, the bow. Our mighty bow, which I'm not going to collect right now. Like, there is no point in doing that. Okay, what do you do if you somehow, um... Well, fell down there now. <laughs> fell in here. I don't know how that would happen, but it happened to me. Well, it's fairly easy and fairly easy explosiveless backup would be to shoot this eye with a bow and uh, which triggers this platform here and then you can use the deck, you know, uh, the deck you flower to get back up here is actually fairly easy. Uh, if you're doing hookshot round, then you are required to or then you should do a song of time storage, a 45 degree angle or a pretty, yeah, pretty much 45 degree angle here slash. So B, A, hold B and um, rotate your control stick will get you into the pillar and you can void out here. Just a real quick reminder, because there is still a lot of stuff we can we have to cover. Uh, if you if you want to be really safe, you can always activate this switch here. Well, I just uh, ruined a backup, but that's not that big of a deal. You can always use the casual strat in order to shoot into light light this thing there, then shoot this torch, get into there, but before that you have to grab the boss key and blah blah blah. It's all not really that important. Um, usually people don't do that because it wait, like it's just doing stuff like that usually takes like five minutes. So urine is usually fairly dead if that happens. All right, we're into this room and this is where runs die. And Tatel uh, is, uh, Tatel likes them. So you don't really, <laughs> you don't really want to go there. <laughs> so what can you do? So there is, a, first of all, you got to get up this pillar here. In order to do the, to skip the boss key altogether in this dungeon, you will have to get up here. All right. So first slash your sword, target this pillar and get the infinite sword glitch. Then you're going to untarget. You have to untarget a chew. It's... Like, this is mandatory. After this, you do, after untargeting, two more chew, chew hovers. So uh, if you don't get the untarget in the first frame or in the first chew, because you always only have one frame to do this, then just do it within one of the other frames and hold, hold down and hit the Zora mask. Okay, this is where a tricky part comes in. What you want to do here, you hit B on the pillar and then you move left. 
Like, just hold your control stick to the left. Link will automatically move forward and grab the ledge. Like this. Okay. So, there is one frame in here that we need to target on. And we want a pause buffer in that one. And the frame looks like this. So, make sure to hit that frame and not that other frame um, where the fins and the hat are parallel to each other. You definitely don't want that one because, well, you're gonna fall down. It's another one frame trick. <laughs> it's not so hard. It's, it's not so hard. Just hold left, pause buffer, and you can already see, you see the frame here. And now on target, uh, on pause, hold target and A. Now you're not facing the dragonflies. There is no way for Tail to go for the dragonflies and you're in the pillar. Okay, what you want to do now is just unequip your Zora mask, which makes Link automatically turn and then get the infinite sword glitch and do a back hover. Now four more hovers with a bomb choose. One, two, three, four. From here on, you have two options. You want to do another mega flip. So either you equip the bow, or if you're a little more advanced, you don't need the bow and you can untarget. I'll show you both ways. Um, first of all, you wanna uh, you wanna do a mega flip, obviously. Buffer that one. This might not work. All right, this was a failed mega flip, but that's not that big of an issue, really. All right, so here we are. If you are good enough, like if you already have a good amount of skill in this game, you can untarget the chew which you're going to use in order to keep you in height and fix the camera. This is going to look like this and you can fix the camera. However, if you did not get that, you can always draw the bow and this will fix your camera. The next mega flip. Oh, all right. Oh, right, right. Uh, what you want to pay attention to is to use the first bomb chew, like use the bomb chew on your mega flip as Link starts to scream. Like you hear him like choke and, or like gasp. <laughs> it's not choking. You, he you hear Link gasp and then he'll start screaming and you want to draw that first bomb chew between the gasp and the scream. This is a good cue that you got the right distance. Then fix your camera and do another mega flip with holding up left. And here we are, the boss room. All right, this boss has um, two easy ways to deal with him. One is quick spinning. The other one is stun locking. Um, you can do both. And in order to get there, there is another two strategies. Okay, Odoa will always, always spawn the, on the plant over there. He will jump down, land on the plant. You can stun him right away, but that puts you in an awkward position. It makes it hard to hit him. Um, you don't want that. So, okay, I'm gonna show you a strat which is just barely slower and um, granted you have bombs left over and guarantees you to not get into an awkward position. Uh, what you definitely wanna do is jump slash into the cutscene. If you're running hookshot route, you might have a Deku stick here. Don't use it, it's not effective on Adola. All right, well, I just did a jump slash before the cutscene here, but that's not that big of a deal. Odoa avoids bombs like the plague. So what can you do to make him get into a better position? You throw a bomb and shoot him while he's in the air. That stuns him and gets him into a stun lock. From the stun lock on, you can time your crouch stabs basically every 0.6 seconds in order to keep him in a stun lock and uh, defeat Odoa fairly easy. It's really not hard to do that. You gotta get a feel for it. There is no real visual cue for this fight, but you'll get the you'll get the idea really quick. Like getting 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 the fight down really isn't that big of an issue. Anyways, I hope you uh, I hope you find this informative. There were a couple of backs up backups I left out because those are just basically either very specific to certain routes. Um, for example, the hookshot route, which is fairly outdated. Uh, and I would just recommend for beginners, but even those backup strategies are fairly advanced, so I'm not recommending to learn those. And um, even if you can do them, you're still gonna lose like five minutes, so that's not gonna be worth it. Anyways, thanks everyone for watching. 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed my first attempt of a very impromptu video. <laughs> if you have any suggestions, any questions, I have a good amount of knowledge of Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker, Mirror's Edge, Donkey Kong 64, and uh, Breath of the Wild very soon. So if you want to see anything done, maybe just for fun, maybe some useless glitches, I'm all ears. Thank you for watching. Check out our channel. Make sure to subscribe if you liked it. Let us know what you think of our transition. 